Hey everybody, welcome back to Bruner Tuner. Today we've got our first round of modifications for the F-250 Super Duty. We're throwing some mirrors on. All right guys, like I said, today we're gonna to be upgrading the stock mirrors on our 99 F-250 Super Duty. We've been provided a set of mirrors from Yeetah Motors on Amazon. They provided us with a nice set of 2008 2016 Super Duty style mirrors that have heaters, power function, and they have some turn signals on the outside, which look pretty cool. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we got, compare the two, and uh, get to the install. So before I started the video, I went ahead and installed one side to show you what the difference is, just so you could see on the truck. And uh, on the passenger side, we'll go ahead and install that one for you and show you how it's done. These mirrors though, they provide quite a bit of a bigger footprint for rear road visibility. This is a much larger area here, and the convex mirror on the bottom is a much larger piece of glass, and it provides much more rear road visibility, which when you're towing that trailer is gonna be a great thing to have. Additionally, something I like is these have got some side marker turn signals here. I opted for the smoked lens instead of the amber option. I think this is a little bit more discreet and more my style. So here's a side-by-side -side of what these mirrors look like. And again, you can see the difference in the size of mirrors, especially that convex towing mirror is gonna be a huge help. Now, another thing we get is the wiring harness that comes with the mirror to power the motor, the heater, and the turn signal. Our factory ones on this XL model don't have any of that, so we will be having to run our own wires to make this project work. One of the things Yeetah Motor included with the mirrors was a pigtail harness adapter to go from the mirror harness they provide to the factory Ford one. Of course, since this is an XL model, I won't have this feature, but those of you with a model that had factory power mirrors, this will provide a harness adapter that will go to your factory Ford harness, so you can use your power mirror buttons to adjust these mirrors around. But what we will be doing today is running some power from the factory turn signals through into the cab to the mirrors so we can have that turn signal functioning like we want it to. Let's get into the install. So the install for this is pretty simple. What we're gonna do is pop off this one corner piece here and that's done just like that. And then we're gonna have access to our four bolt holes to pull the mirror off. Uh, it'd be nice if I had a helper, but since I'm doing this by myself, I'm gonna roll down the window, get my hand out there and uh, hold this thing so it doesn't fall on the ground. So just so you can see here, we've got one, two, and then behind here we'll have a third and a fourth bolt hole. And you can just peel this back a little bit to get access to those bolt holes. And just for reference, I needed to use an 11 millimeter to get these off. One thing you're gonna wanna make sure whenever you're taking these off is that you don't drop the bolt down inside the door panel. If that does happen, you can pull the door panel out, remove the door speaker, and you will be able to fish it back out, but uh, it's better if you just avoid that situation altogether. And there we go. One factory mirror taken off. Those of you with an XL like me might be wondering where exactly you're gonna put this wiring harness since we didn't have one from the factory. But let me take you around here and show you where it goes. Once you pull your factory mirror off, you're gonna see your four bolt holes here. But additionally, you're gonna have this square port, which is where you're gonna fish that down into and pull it out on the other side. Now these did come with some 10 millimeter bolts you could use, uh, but I'm gonna stick with the factory 11 millimeter hardware. It's a little bit nicer and it's got a separated washer that uh, will help this not scratch up your paint whenever you tighten it down. The last thing you're gonna wanna do is get your quarter inch torque wrench and tighten these down to 80 inch pounds. So in order to get this door panel off, we've got a couple bolts we gotta remove and those are done with a seven millimeter. We've got one right here underneath the reflector. Those of you with an XLT trim, you might find that this piece is a little bit bigger, but the principle is still the same. We're gonna pop this off and get access to that seven millimeter underneath. And it looks like I'm missing mine, so don't gotta do that. If you've got manual crank windows like me, this will need to be removed too, and that's done with a T15 Torx driver. Some 
of you might have a door light, which will be down here. So make sure you unplug that light before you go pulling this door way too far. So we've got our plug fish through, pulled it through the square hole here. If your fingers are a little bit too big, you might pull out the door speaker and have an easier time reaching that. Those of you with an XLT trim or higher, you're gonna find the plug that this is gonna plug into on the door frame just in front of your door handle here. Those of you with an XL trim like I have, you're not gonna have a plug there. So we're gonna leave this thing inside the door frame and let it hang out for now. But in the future, we will be making good use of all of these pins. All right, so we got both of our mirrors put in place here. And let me tell you, these things look pretty sweet. It gets rid of that Mickey Mouse shape factory mirror that we had, and we're also gonna get much more rearward visibility. Can't wait to put a trailer behind this thing and see how good these convex mirrors work. The next step is gonna be going under the hood, tapping into the factory turn signal harness and running those into the cab to the mirror plug itself. And we'll see if we can get those turn signals working on the mirrors. Yeah. All right, guys, it's a new day. Yesterday, we got the mirrors put on the truck and today we're gonna tackle that wiring. So let's take a look at the tools we're gonna be using. Yeah. We've got some spools of wire here. Uh, this is some 20 gauge stuff. Uh, you might go a little bigger if you're doing this. Um, if I did it again, I'd probably purchase some 16 gauge. This is a little thin, but it will get the job done. Uh, we've got some T-taps here. This is how we're gonna tap into the factory harness. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because it's quick and easy and it'll leave us with uh, minimal damage to the factory wiring harness. Some various connectors with pins and everything we need to build our harness plugs. Good quality wire stripper. And then of course, uh, some crimps for the pins in our connectors. Inside our truck, we've got access to the underside of the dash here. Uh, what we're going to do is reference our online diagrams that we found and see which of our wires go to the right and left turn signals as well as the parking lights. Okay, so this is our factory F250 wiring diagram and we're looking at two main circuits here. That's the light switch and the directional and hazard switch. On the light switch to get our running lights, we're gonna tap into the brown wire, which is to our parking lights. And for the directional signals, we're going to tap into any one of the directional lights I'm going with the rear, so that's the orange and light blue and the light green and orange for left and right, respectively. Another tool you need to grab is a multimeter. And actually, before I disconnect the battery, I'm going to check the voltage on the identified wires from my wiring diagram and make sure that I've got the right stuff. So right now I'm hooked into the back of the light switch and on the diagram it says the brown wire goes to the parking lights. So if we turn the switch on, we can see that in fact, we have 12 volts once this is switched on. So that is correct. These are our parking lights here. So what I'm gonna do is tap into this wire and I'm gonna send power to both of the mirrors on the circuit for the parking lights. All right, guys, so we've identified which wires we're using. If you look up under here, I've got, for my right signal, I've got the orange and light blue. That's a majority orange with a light blue stripe. And then for the left turn signal, I've got green with an orange stripe. That's majority green with an orange stripe. And these are on the wiring diagram for the truck labeled as the rear indicator lights. So I tested these with my multimeter and of course they were spiking voltage with the click of the relay. So I knew I had the right wires. What I've done now is I've got my plug I'm gonna be using for the left turn signal run through the door. I'm gonna be fishing this through our little corrugated hose into the door panel. And then I actually depend a couple of these plugs into my own plug here. And that's how I'll be running this to the mirror. these things working. Now I will say those lights are kind of dim. I know these are smoked lenses. Um, 
So hopefully it's just a daytime thing. We'll check back at night, see how these things look, and then I'll give you my final review. So yeah guys, these marker lights, you can kind of see it right there. They're a little dim, they use incandescent bulbs, and I have read that you can access that light and replace it with an LED. So I might do that because while these aren't really for, you know, forward visibility or anything like that, I would like them to at least be somewhat visible because these things are super dim. Just, I mean, I'm right up on them. You can see that they're just not very bright. All right, well, that's gonna do it for this one, guys. As far as the mirrors go, I do really like them. I drove it around a little bit and you do have a much better rearward visibility. These 2008 to 2016 style mirrors are great. They really, really changed the look of the truck and I do like them a lot. If I had any complaints, it would be that turn signal is very, very dim. In the future, I'd like to take advantage of the rest of the features these mirrors have by wiring in a heated mirror switch, as well as wiring up some power mirrors to this thing. But that'll be for a future episode because I've got a whole bunch of stuff planned for that. But for now, that's gonna do it. If you'd like to pick up a set of these mirrors for yourself, I'll link it down in the description, as well as the kits and tools I use to wire these things up. So stay tuned, like this video, share it, let us know what you like and what you don't. Stay tuned as always, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.